Good evening and welcome to this special Zoomcast edition of our Voices in the Field podcast series brought to you by the APUS Sports Management Program. My name is Dr. Jim Reese. And as you can see, I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Brittany Jacobs and Dr. Brian Freeland. And in a few minutes, we'll bring in our special guest, Mr. Sonny Vaccaro. But first, Britt, you've been working hard this week with, uh, with <laughs> some members of our team to organize some questions uh, from the registration process that came in. And you're also going to be working on some live questions tonight. So would you be kind enough to share with our audience how that's going to work? Absolutely. So we're going to collect live questions throughout this entire webinar. And if you have a question, go ahead down to that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and enter your question there. We'll then be able to pull questions and ask those to Sunny throughout this entire presentation. Now, we probably won't get to every question. So if your question isn't answered, don't feel bad, um, but we will try to answer as many as we can throughout this presentation. Without further ado, Jim, back over to you to introduce our man of the hour. Thank you, Britt. And yes, now joining us live, the soul man himself, Mr. Sonny Vaccaro. Oh, there he is. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm live and in person from uh, Palm Springs, California. And uh, I'm so happy. I'm looking forward to this day for a while. In fact, a couple of years, Jim. It's, uh, it's been a while, so we, Sonny. We yeah. got it together and I'm actually ready to answer any questions that anybody has on their mind or even if it's not on their mind, they can make it up and I'll probably give them an answer. <laughs> I have no doubt. So um, <laughs> now, now in a few minutes, I'm just going to share a little bit of your, uh, some of your accomplishments over the course of your career. But would you like to just introduce yourself briefly to, to our audience? Yeah, my name is Sandy Vaccaro. I don't take no for an answer. But the, the truth of the matter, what you're watching today, I come up with an answer to a question that was given me 40 years ago about putting a guy in a shoe. That's that's what I'm going to tell them. I answered the question, I guess. Well, that sounds great. We're, we're all looking forward to that. So now just to, to touch, and this is just a few things that we're going to talk. We just don't have time to include them all, but a few things to, that you've done over the course of your career. And at, being from Pennsylvania, of course, I'm familiar with the Dapper Dan um, a classic that was the first uh, first all star uh, nation, you know, recruiting high school players nationwide uh, to have an all star game. Um, and it was also the first time coaches were able to recruit and, and evaluate talent at one location instead of traveling all around the country. So um, and you almost got Kareem. I heard so that's uh that would have been really special if he would have got Kareem and that was the one I wanted the first yeah. year of oh, the first turn down I got and I got some others later on in my life but uh but the game went on and we sold it out the thing in 1965 and it was the first all-star game in America there's no question about that and it has grown to many events including the McDonald's uh you know all-American uh, right. game as well so you were also the first person to sign coaches to shoe contracts yeah which brilliant ensured that uh the teams would be wearing your brand uh, at the time they were nike so that was another major accomplishment so all we had to do was pay them uh yeah. so, the kid, so the kids could i ideally wear the shoes so we then we can sell because it wasn't we were paying the coaches for them to wear the shoe to sell those shoes i was i figured out well they'll make the kids wear the shoes the kids will see the shoes nike was pretty successful doing that way ahead of their time i i think it worked out pretty well so yeah i did um, i do and, and of course we know about the michael journey signing because of the because of the movie and all these are these are in addition to that um you also found another pretty good high school player named uh, kobe bryant and you were able to uh, which is a whole separate movie by itself there uh, by the way but um and uh, I, I believe you knew his dad jelly bean is that correct and that's how uh, that happened yes not, not only did I know him, his father was the MVP in the 1972 Dapper Dan Round Ball Classic, and his mother's brother, Chubby Cox, played in the 1973. So I sort of knew, got to meet Kobe before he was born, because mm. I had the bloodlines there yeah. playing that All-Star game. So, yes. Yeah. You know, it's funny, we talk all the time about how everything in life is about building relationships, and there's no question you've been able to do that over the course of your career. Um, you also came, Jordan Kobe, you came this close to signing another pretty good talent while you were at Adidas named LeBron James. 
And um, that just uh, fell through at the last minute. But if you would have had all three, I mean, two is great, but if you would have had all three, that would have been really, really amazing. So, Well, that would have been, but you, you mentioned that Adidas screwed up and, and they did, and they screwed up with Michael too. They were, so I was involved. I won one and I lost one. <laughs> I, I, got, I got Michael for Nike. Thank God for that. And I, you know, Adidas had another chance to get a great one and they screwed that one up too. That's the, the, those things are historical. That's for sure. Well, and then most recently, you know, your involvement with the O'Bannon lawsuit, which um, those of the students that are here are familiar with uh, name, image, and likeness is a rather uh, popular uh, topic of discussion these days. And that case was the one that opened the door for uh, athletes to be compensated for it for NIL. And so that's, uh, that's just, uh, you know, any one of those, Sonny, is, 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 a, is a heck of an accomplishment. And you, you put all those together. That's a, it's an amazing career. You've, been, uh, you've made a, a, a very significant impact on the, on the sport of basketball. You should be very proud. Yeah, you know, Jim, thank you to, your, to the audience out there. If you judge a life and one's allowed to do that on his own, I guess, to me and my wife, Pam, the most significant thing I was ever able to do is help the, the lawyers and the kids and Eddie O'Bannon and the thousands of other kids, you know, that it, it benefited. Uh, so I think the O'Bannon thing was, you know, the one that I'll hopefully be remembered by more than even signing Michael. Michael started it all in my life. The Dapper Dan really started, but O'Bannon was the most meaningful thing that served a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Speaking of the Dapper Dan, you ready for the first question? Absolutely. Okay. Now th this was what, this was mine and that I've been wanting to ask this for a long time. So uh, back to the Dapper Dan, when, when, I mean, that was, that was groundbreaking. What were you thinking? What was the genesis of, of putting that together? What was your vision for that? And how did that thing whole get, the whole, that whole thing get started? You know, one minute or less, I, basketball was not a sport that I played well in high school. I had nothing to do with, I had nothing to do with basketball my whole life. And other than when I couldn't play football anymore, I helped the coach at Youngstown recruit some players because he liked my energy. But to get to your point, I thought in my mind that the most, uh, once I, you know, got graduated from college, I, was, I wasn't at the university anymore. I had an idea that I saw so many great athletes, basketball players, because there was, I was now coaching at Trafford High School and they were getting ignored by getting scholarships and by getting recognized because Pennsylvania, among most of the states, was known for the football players. But we had some great athletes. So I went to a friend of mine named Pat DeCesar, who I had grown up with, who had a background of working uh, promotions in music. And I went to him with an idea. I said, I'll tell you what, I have an idea. I think we have enough kids in this state to show the world that we can play basketball along with football and baseball was basically a, a second choice of people in the, in the early 50s and 60s in Pennsylvania. And we did the Dapper Dan game before anyone thought of it. Pennsylvania kids against the rest of the world. So I had 10 from Pennsylvania and 10 from America that I did not know. I did not see. I used to read the books about them. So Jim, that was an idea too, that just you know, morphed into being 13 years ahead of the, the McDonald's game, which can Terry's. Pam and I left everything we started uh, to pursue the O'Bannon case in, uh, in 2007, eight and I, I shut down everything we did. We did the camp, the ABCD camp, the Deborah Dan game and the big time tournament. And, and we, we, we look for a, a plaintiff. We found Eddie, you know, Obana. The timing was right for that with what happened yes. uh, with, uh, you know, uh, Ed just happening to talking to a friend about a video game and it, it kind of yeah. went from there. So, so, hey, how about we do, how about we do a, a question from one of our students? Uh, let's bring Britt back in. And uh, Britt, what do you have for us? All right. Hi, Sunny. We've got a question from our audience. This one comes from Annalise Lido. She says, Sonny, how did you manage to stay resilient when you were surrounded by no's and constant negativity? You know what? And that's, that's, so not, I never had that. You got me for one second. You don't pay attention to it. If you believe in yourself and you believe in whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, that can't stop you. You can only be stopped by not being able to do the job. 
And when someone tells you you can't do it without knowing who in the hell you are and what your idea was and why you believe you can do it. So I, and I've had a lot of those so-called people in my life. I've, I think I've, I faced many of them throughout the years, whether it was the Dapper Dan, whether it was, you know, what, whatever it was along the way. And obviously, you know, uh, at one point in time, then Nike didn't think I had anything more to do and they let me go. So I actually got fired from the people who started me, but that didn't stop me from going on to the next step. So I, I appreciate that, but you can't let people guide your life, I think. That's excellent. And then I have one more from the audience for you, Sonny. This one came in a couple of weeks ago, actually. It's from Troy Massey. And he says, what was your biggest regret in your career? And if you had a chance to fix it, would you, or would you do the same thing over? Well, you know, that's a good question. That's asked a lot, you know, doing it over, regret it. I, I, I can't regret it because I must have believed in it and I wanted to do it. I failed to do it. I wasn't able to accomplish what I wanted to do, but it was not regretful. I mean, I've had setbacks. I mean, uh, that's for dang sure. So, uh, and, and, and doing things over, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you continue with the same sincerity you had in your mind, it, it, it's all about you. It's all about that person. You can't let a setback do it. And you certainly can't let someone else's opinion just strictly based on whatever they're basing it on, stop you from thinking. And that's, I hope that answered his question. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Sonny. All right. This question comes from Merteza Jelani. She said, you were integral in the commercialization of sports. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like when you started compared to today? Well, when, it, when, I, when I started, there weren't a lot of good ideas, I guess. You were stagnated <laughs> into the world you lived in. And you certainly didn't have the assets that we have today by all the communication we can do immediately. So it's, it's, it's a good question, but everything's relative to the time you're in. I think uh, uh, something I'd like to say, uh, I've heard a few times by other people much smarter than I am that said, you know, the, you know, the Jordan thing, was not really about an athlete. It was more about marketing. And I think who would, I didn't think that when I said those words, I thought about helping Nike sell a couple more shoes because sure. an individual was going to wear them. So, but marketing came out of that. And, and we were a precursor in 1984 to what Silicon Valley became. Now Silicon Valley is like out of it and we're getting, you know, artificial information you know, you know what I'm saying here, all, all this new stuff coming along that we don't know how it is, but we got computers smarter than us. Yes. And, and what has to be done, what ha everything, but you have to adjust. It's a reality of life now. So when I started before me, I mean, uh, look at Barbie doll. I mean, my God, Barbie and Ken, who would have thunk, right? You know, but <laughs> it was an idea and it lasted through a whole you know, generations of children to grow up to adults. And, and we're watching, we're watching something now that was actually, I don't know, I don't know what it was, because I mean, Barbie, and I'm using that to give an analysis to the, the people watching this, that something may seem ridiculous or silly, but it isn't because there's an audience for everyone. And it's a new thing that brings in the new invention, the new thought the new movement, you know, watching singing developed. I, 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 I love, I love entertainment. I love, you know, music. The, the second fantasy of my life is watching great entertainers act. And I've watched the transition of my, I can go back way to lead belly and, you know, and, and country music. And then, you know, the hip hop and all the things we get, you know, until we get to today. And then it's all different. The same people, the same types. I mean, we just lost, you know, some of your audience is going to know who Tony Bennett was, but sure. he lasted 60 years and 70 years of his music and it'll continue. So we, you have to adjust out there now, audience. You have to think of something that's relative to not only today, what the hell can be good tomorrow? That's what it is. That's incredible. Thank you, Sonny. Uh, Jim, I'm going to bring you out to do a little trivia. Let's see how well our attendees know Sonny Vaccaro. Yes, let's do that. 
Now, while, they're, while we're waiting for that to come up, uh, here's how this is going to work. Uh, to answer this question, <laughs> the audience, <laughs> you like that, Sonny? Uh, to answer this question, yeah. and just go into the, uh, the, at the bottom center part of your panel, you'll see the chat uh, button. Just go into the want, chat button. You want me to go to it? No, no, this is for, our, for the rest of our audience. Oh, okay, to, uh, good, because I can't, okay, question. go ahead. Yep, and so if you want to go ahead and, and, uh, and put your response in there, the chat, uh, and we're going to pull um, the uh, one of the correct answers out, and you're going to win a prize. And we're going to send you a link to a form that you can fill out and uh, and claim your prize. So, this first question: Which of the following companies did Sunny not work for? Adidas, Converse, Nike, and Reebok. So, give a, a, a few seconds, and then we'll uh, and then we'll we'll bring a bring a, the name of a winner with several hundred. Uh, People watching, I can only imagine how they're getting flooded with uh, with uh, with responses right now. So, I'm looking at all the ones picking them down here. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll we'll come back with the name okay. uh, of the of the you know, winner for the trivia question, and we'll just uh, move on to the next uh, uh, to the next thing. So, the next question uh, is from. Uh, actually, this is one of the questions that I had in my mind as well, but. Uh, but it's from Andrew Marshall, and he said it better than the way I was thinking of it. But, and this kind of ties into what you, the one of the questions you just answered. But, did fear of failure ever cross your mind? <laughs> no, never in my life. And I'm not saying it to be bravado or here. That that's a fact. I mean, I, I, um, you know, I don't know what would have happened if I wouldn't have signed Michael or started the Dapper Dan game, but. If you just take one's life, and each of you should out there, and wherever you are, and you're 19, 20, 25 year old, on the whole, our, 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 our you know, pupils are here, uh, Jim. But you can't, you you can't let it, you know, stop you. I mean, I I thought I'd be successful in doing whatever it was. I I I believed in my next journey, I, and and when there was none there, something created itself. I mean, my, my, when you when you look at the total of my life and any anyone's life, there are there are steps you're going to look back. What they can do now is look back on the 19 years or 20 years previous to this and see where they've gotten. Right now they're in a pretty goddamn good school. Their the life has started now. You're not, you know, you got you had a start on something. But no, I I I never believed I'd fail. And I failed. And I, this is not like a, a, you know foolproof here. I've had ups and downs, buddy, you know, yeah. most of my life. And I'm still having them today. I mean, yeah. you adjust and you go on. You adjust and you go on. But, you know, that, that's that's the only thing I can say. Just, yeah. and, and, you know, some people say, well, that's so trite. Or that's these people say, believe in yourself. Well, if you don't, and if you allow bravado to speak for you, if you allow others to think what they want you to be, I don't know what the success rate in that is, really. I, I, I don't, because the only way you can answer yourself when something goes wrong is no one forced me to do this. I did this because I wanted to do it. But, but Sonny, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because it's really <laughs> unique. No, I'm serious. It's really unique to have that because there are a lot of people with a lot of ideas that like starting a business, for example, and, and, and there's a lot of risk involved in a lot of that. And you just seem to be fearless. And that, that's just truly amazing to me because most people are not willing to take some of those risks. Well, we can't speak for most people. We can't speak for anybody, Jim. But yeah. basically, if you're asking me a question to this group of people, if maybe nothing they take away from tonight's story is, yeah, I, I I didn't let that happen. And I'm telling you guys, I you know, I, I'm 83 years old and I'm doing a, a performance now to a group of very intelligent people here. And, you know, and my mind is working. I'm not afraid of doing I love doing it. I wish the hell we could talk for five more hours. I mean, but you can't do it. I think that's the most important thing one can have other than, you know, it's like going on America's Got Talent. You know, no one knows what the hell is going to happen until they open their mouth or sing their song or, or jump off the ledge and, you know, and get caught by their uncle. <laughs> so these things happen every day in life. It's the ones that, you know, turn around the car and get out. Um, don't turn around the car. Keep driving. 
Uh, that's uh, it, it's just it's truly amazing to and it's important to stay positive, but there, there's a certain level of risk there, and it, it's just truly amazing. Yeah, really. so, but uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can bring Brian back in for his uh, for his question. Oh, there he is. Brian, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a little technical difficulties. Thank you. Big patience. So, Go ahead, Brian. As, as a huge basketball fan and a, a former high school coach, and I, I still work with, with basketball players at the high school level, you've seen so many, uh, so much talent at the high school grassroots level. Uh, I know our audience has a lot of coaches, people that work uh, in athlete development, trainers. Uh, could you help us uh, give some advice maybe or, or, or shed some light on uh, what differentiates the athletes, the high school athletes that you see that actually make it to the pros versus some that don't? What are some of those intangibles? In my mind, for every one of those kids I made a judgment on to do something with or take them to the camp or sign them a contract or whatever, invest my life or my my company, whoever I'm working for, like, it's the guts that they have. It's how much they believe in themselves. But the truth of the whole matter from Jordan comes down to one thing. I only remember that shot. That's all I remember. I didn't give a damn about Michael Jordan. I wasn't going he, to, he didn't play in the Dapper Dan game. Dean Smith w worked for the Converse. They wore Converse shoes. Michael was made public even while he was playing there that he wanted to wear Adidas shoes. That, that shot, I was rooting for Georgetown that day. We, they were one of our selling thousands of shoes. Patrick Ewing and two other kids on that, that, in that game that I, I watched them beat, they played in the Dapper Dan game. I had a Georgetown kid in that game, you know, as long as I had a game. I had, if they were good enough, they played in the Dapper Dam. So it was the most ironic thing ever happened in my life because the key to the, to when it happened was they asked me a question. I said, and this is basically what I said, give it to the kid. What kid? The kid from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. You realize that I didn't even, wasn't smart enough to say Michael Jordan right away. I always, and I still think of Michael as that 18 year old kid when they watched that video and that movie. I didn't rely on that movie. I didn't see that movie when I said those words, did I, ladies and gentlemen? No, I couldn't have figured that wasn't out there. I only saw the game. I saw 18 seconds and he took the shot. And then the movie, when Matt goes through and explains it, you know, just you know, for the 18 seconds, brilliant. But I'm saying to you, it's the guts, the, the will to win. There's always something Kobe Bryant said. Most of them, I can remember what the first thing was that I knew they were different. If you read anything about you know, uh, you know Kobe and, and LeBron and whatever and Tracy, they, they just didn't get as much. But I knew that I liked them before I even thought I had to know why I liked them. They made an impression on me. They, they did. So and I hope that answers your question. It's not something that I can relay and tell these people to look for. I thought having the, the guts to take the shot or the sense to make the pass or heck, I'm better than all these people. I'm going to kick their butt. And if you look at the great ones, they say it out loud. I've been watching the thing on Will Chamberlain, which your, your audience probably doesn't even remember. When you look at somebody, I don't know who in the world could have ever been a greater basketball player than Will Chamberlain. So I don't get caught up in goats because I think basketball players specifically, they go by the generation they play in because that game has changed more than any other game, Brian. So these kids are different. So one thing I'd like to say, get a, you know, and Brian, do you have another one real quick? And I'll, I'll say it when you're done. No, this is perfect. Thank you. Okay. You the, one, the one kid, and there's a, there's a video on him named Benji, Ben Wilson. He's, he's one kid that I never got to see play a college game or a high school game or whatever, because I saw him at the ABCD camp when I first took it over in 1984. And he got, 
he was the number one player come out of nowhere. And the first camp, ABC camp that I was involved with, I only saw him that couple of days, didn't know who in the hell he was. He was from Chicago. I wasn't as deep into it. It was my first year. We were just sponsoring at that time, Nike was. And I fell in love with him. And then I fell in love with him. And I was picking him to play for, I wanted him to play in the Dapper Dan because then we had other all-star games and I was staying in touch. And I used to call him on a pay phone because there was no cell phones in 1980, you know, whenever heck that was. And, um, and he got murdered. And the story Benji is the saddest story in my life because he never had an opportunity even to get beyond the high school phase. I never got to know him. I only knew what I watched, I fell in love with, and I was sad that it happened. Obviously, I was sad that anything bad happened, Brian. You you would for any athlete. So Benji's the kid I wish I could have watched grow because at that time, in my mind, that was before Michael, that was, he was the kid. He was the kid that had everything and then ended up murdered. Go ahead, take me to another one. That's perfect. I really appreciate your response. I'm going to hand it over to Jim. Thank you, Brian. And let's go back to Britt for, for a question uh, from one of our students. Britt, would you uh, share another one with us, please? Sure would. Before we do that, I want to call out our winner of the first trivia question, Philip Gaddy. Congratulations. Um, you're going to be getting some AMU or APU swag. So you're going to receive a direct message. So make sure you look out for that and then fill out the link so that we can get that swag to you. All right, Sunny, next question we have for you. Um, this is coming from one of our live audience members right now. They say, it's with great admiration that they address you today. The inspiration that you have provided throughout the years has been invaluable, and they're grateful for the opportunity to hear you speak. As they embark on their career in marketing, they'd be immensely grateful for any advice or thoughts on contacts as to how to get into the field. Your wealth of experience as an accomplished entrepreneur is invaluable, and they want to learn from your expertise. Well, I would say to the person who asked me that question, I don't know what field you're in, so I'll just assume we just you have an idea of what you're going to be, what you're majoring in, all that sort of stuff. At this age, and I don't know exactly what age you know some of these are, I would make friends with like-minded people. Then I would then I because I've done this. Then I would make friends with people that have done well, that have nothing to do with anything I understand or understood to learn why they had this idea. Where did this come from? See, I think ideas are the life, the life line of anyone that wants to succeed in doing anything in a field that that's what's created, whether you're going to be a designer, how do you do that? Which one is more ridiculous than the other one? But man, is that something? Because that's, as I watched all these years, young lady, I, I watched, that's what was important to me. I, I paid attention to it. I have a lot of friends that I have nothing in common with along the way. And this, to me, helped me become more well-rounded, not as smart in what they were doing, but trying to understand what the hell made you think of that? What a good idea, <laughs> because that's basically what people are asking me today. What made you think of that? And I sort of, you know, told, you know, Brian, that's Michael was just visually watching that. I was there in person, 18 seconds. It's something you don't know that'll help you learn more. And then once you got it, once you got faith in yourself, take it to the limit. Take it to the limit. Go for it. You get no's. Hell, I've had 10,000 no's. You know, that's the, what you do. No is the most popular word in American language. No one wants to admit it. No, no, no. Don't do this. Don't do that. No, no, no. But then somebody's going to say, you know what? Yeah, that's a pretty good story. That's a pretty good movie. That's a pretty good song. You know how many songs that are written every day? You know how many you know, shows we have? You know, you go to the movies every year? Thousands, thousands. But then somebody writes the right words. Somebody sings the right tune. 
somebody does the great poetry and somebody will think of something to take the Silicon Valley or go beat that thing that has that answer to everything. I, I don't know what to call that thing, but you know, the intelligent guy. <laughs> Jack, I don't know if I can compete. I don't know if I can compete against him, <laughs> her or it. <laughs> right, exactly. Go ahead. No, that's amazing. Um, we have one more question from the audience that just came in. This one is from Vaughn Breet. It says, in the famous speech in Air movie that you made about MJ, how much of that was fiction or did it really go down the way that the movie portrayed it? No, that it's not totally fiction because I did speak, but I did. And I spoke in those words many times to many kids and many groups of people, especially kids. You know, they were the encouraging words. Th those words, that day we did all talk. Mrs. J Mrs. Jordan wasn't able to do what Viola did either that day, but she was able to she was able to back up her son. The most important thing that day was to make sure that contract was a thing. So there were liberties taken, but there were no blatant lies or taken out of context. Or, you know, some things didn't happen, but they weren't the way the, the way it was you know portrayed. But I like to think, as I'm doing with this audience today, I've never made this speech before. It's not a speech; it's an answer, a question and answer thing, and never said what I said to the last you know, question you had. So the movie is real. I was the guy involved. All the other people involved knew Michael or were close to Michael, and we all got it done. But Rob Strasser and Peter Moore, you know, uh, I, I think they finally got their, their day in the sun because Peter Moore designed that shoe. That happened. I was around when all that was. He did that. No one else did it. And that logo at the end, when you read the ladies and gentlemen, that logo will live forever. And Peter Moore will do it. And the Rob Strasser, they they cut him a little short. They didn't give him too enough time, as far as I'm concerned, because Rob was my liaison. Rob believed in me. I didn't know feel that way well then. Why would I? I was doing the colleges and you know, no one really knew feel that well. But it, he was the man who made the answers. And he did, you know, even though there was, you know, doubt until the end, that actually happened. There, there seems to be seen that that really were the turning point. But each time there was something different, there got closer. So the movie, there, there are no lies in there. No, no, one, no one killed anybody that way. But that's, that's what happened. But I do love to make speeches and I, I guess I'm pretty good at it. I just think just come out of my mouth. I don't know what the hell I'm saying sometime, but I, but I mean what I'm saying though. I love it, Sonny. I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Sonny, you, you have the line of the night so far. You, you said when you were working with Michael, you were going to sell a couple shoes. <laughs> well, yeah, I think you accomplished your goal there. Well, we did, but, but uh, if you go back and take everything into context, you know, we all that 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 number up there, the, you know, was a real number. But who in hell thought that? We thought if we'd sell, you know, you know, one million or whatever the heck it was, it would be great. Phil that we were just looking to get into the game to have a, an athlete out there because no one, no one, including me, had any idea what was going to happen. Michael's not the most charismatic human being in the world. You know, Michael had his faults as a, as a person. I mean, you know, all that. But what he was, was the most dynamic person playing a sport that was transferable to everybody. We can't go out and play baseball by ourselves or soccer by ourselves or tennis by ourselves. But we can play basketball all by ourselves at that pool, you know, out in the street somewhere and go shoot and make it reverse. He gave us an image of, damn, this is out of the world. He transferred, you know, he, 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 well, I was talking about goats, you know, all that. Michael's the goat. But I don't know the goat in basketball. I know he's the goat in marketing. No one will ever be able to do again what the Jordan shoe did. They'll be selling that shoe when all of us are gone and the remains are wherever the heck they are. But that shoe will live till there ain't no more us's. No, oh, no question about it. No question about it. You know, Sonny, you, you said you touched on another area that as as teachers, 
that we talk about all the time. And, and we, we, we tell our students this over and over because our business is, 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 it's a really small circle if you think about it. And if you don't, you know, if you don't know someone somewhere, you know someone that knows someone there. And you touched on, on networking again a little bit earlier and building, you know, meeting people, getting to know people, getting your name out there, exchanging business cards. That, that's, that's one of the keys to, because our field is so hard to get into. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's great. I mean, you're saying a lot of great things tonight, but the fact that you keep touching on market or on, on networking is, uh, is great because we talk about that in class all the time. So, so. Well, I'm glad because I think that's the only reason I survived. I mean, um, you know, you know, real quick, another story for your audience is I analyzed my wife and my wife. I, I don't analyze Pam. I'm, you know, I'm even enamored by my wife. Okay. But my, my, I analyzed my life as the old days we used to hitchhike. And I used to hitchhike as a kid to get from this town to that town because I didn't have a car and all that. So in my life, I finally owned a car and I got in it one day and I start driving and I drive down to the you know block and I pick up, you know, Jim and I didn't know who Jim was. And he, I said, where are you going? Well, I'm going to pick Karen, which is the next town down. And, you know, and, and I drop him off. But in that drive, we talk about something and I drop him off and I go pick up somebody else. I've been picking up people, hitchhikers, all my life. And they all added to my life. So when you say networking, that's what I did. I made a point, a natural point. It wasn't like I wrote a note to myself to when people came to camp, I'd go meet them. If there were just mom, dad bringing kids and need you know, pictures with somebody, they got them because you don't know who it is that's going to remember whatever it was that you told them that helped them and also helps yourself. So I owe my success to the mothers and fathers and guardians and teachers and coaches of those thousands and thousands of kids who participated in all of my events over these years. They put them on airplanes. They drove them there. They took buses to come to these and he trusted a stranger. I didn't know any of them. So I owe my life of this particular world I've lived in to someone that didn't know me. I feel that's what, that's what networking does. They introduce me, they introduce me, they introduce me. And pretty soon you have a whole thing of introduces. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but you know what? Even if it doesn't, it was meaningful to you at that time. Oh, that's that's a really powerful message. And I, I appreciate you sharing that story. That's um, it's 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 great words of wisdom. So, uh, let's see if we can go and uh, do another. Uh, give some more, give a few more prizes away here. Let's to go to another trivia question if we can. There we go. And again, you can just go into the uh, into the chat box to uh, provide the answers here. But uh, to to uh, answer the trivia question, so which of the following does Sonny consider his proudest moment? Signing Michael Jordan, signing Kobe Bryant. Uh, well, we couldn't. Uh, you didn't yeah, sign LeBron kind of James, so that one, that one's out, right? Uh, right. And, or the O'Bannon case, that should have should have said almost signing LeBron James, right? Almost, almost signing a lot of people. Yeah, you know, that that's the you know the interesting thing, Jim. The, that al almost never wins, though, does he? <laughs> Michael Jordan has a great commercial. It talks about all the the number of times he's failed taking the last shot. And so it was, it's, you know, it, it, you're never going to succeed on shots. You don't no. take that kind of, that kind of thing. And so that's, it's a, that's that's a great message as well. So. Yes, it is. Britt, do we have, and while we're waiting for that, uh, the winner to come in, Britt, do we have any, any questions left? The uh, live ones from. I've got both a winner and I've got some questions. Oh, we'll take it away. All right. James Boyce, congratulations for winning our trivia. Um, you will receive a uh, note, a little link. Make sure you fill out that link so you can get your swag. All right, Sonny, we got another question from the audience for you. This one comes from Kaylin Holdaway, and it says, what inspired you to pioneer the concept of endorsement deals with athletes? Well, you, I, I don't know how, I, I, what inspired me. Again, it was an idea. 
that I they asked me to do a question and they uh, or, uh, answer a question and they say we need somebody to you know sell this shoe and we're going to go to a pro as opposed to all the colleges we had had so then my my thing was the kid so but i always knew i i, I believe i always knew that the the entertainer i'll, I'll put athletes because i i just think that world's sure. so so amazing all entertainers who impose their skills on millions and millions of people over the years, whether they're singing a song, doing an act. See, that, that's what always intrigued me. We have, we have this other movie, Oppen Oppenheimer, do one of the, you know, one way or another, you know, something good or something bad. We have geniuses, geniuses who have done things, you know, to create things, right? And they're not even, no one even knew who the hell Open Number was until the movie came out again. Not who remember who he was? But you remember every one song, you know, that this girl sang or that guy sang. I mean, Lady Gaga and, you know, and all these things, right? I mean, <laughs> sure. all, every generation, every generation, like, you know, you know, I mean, you know, that, so that's, that's the thing that you got to understand what was in my mind. What lasts? What carries on to the next generation what do you go home talking to your neighbor about you don't go talking to your neighbor about you know you know we had we sold 20 boxes of you know whatever the hell we sold today that we don't do that you know all these big companies we don't go and talk about the big company we know that we they buy their product we go home talking about you know bruce springsteen you know sure. so that, that's true well, the big uh, names the people uh, that product. excite us yeah. yeah, well, that, but well, that's what happens. I mean, uh, you know, Beyonce is beyond beyond comprehension anymore. I mean, but there'll be somebody else next week, next year, next month. That's that entertainment that you do for an audience never ever leaves us. I don't know if even that answered your question. I got I get carried away. Sometimes. I love it. No, that's <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much. And we have one more. Um, Jim, one more from the audience, if we've got time. I'm sorry. Yes, but feel That's free good. to go right in. All right. Excellent. Uh, so, Sunny, this question came from an anonymous user, so I don't actually know who they are. Um, but they said, do you think that the commercialization of youth sport has changed the pipeline of talent? Um, has it excluded young people with less means from that talent identification process? And if so, do you think there's any solutions? I don't know. There's so many questions in one question. I mean, let's, let's start. I'll start again. Let me give you the first one. Go. All right. Do you think the commercialization of youth sport has changed the pipeline of talent? Well, sure. The commercialization has, because with commercialization, you get publicity. Publicity is what changes everything. We now know these kids can play before they were playing in the, their backyards. And I think that was even going back to the Dapper Dan. I mean, so I'll I'll just put that together and say one served the other one well. Interesting. All right. And then they asked, so has that commercialization excluded young people with less means um, from having their talent identified? No, because there are so many opportunities now than there weren't 50, 60 years ago. On on his street corner, there's a there's a team, there's a group somewhere in that city. They can go. What they got to do is be aggressive and find. A place to go to find it's there it's there they gotta make the move mom and dad do and if mom and dad's too busy to do it and some kids don't have two parents whatever that is that cannot stop you from finding the game go find a game you'll find out how quick you are in the old days in the 50s and 60s i can always remember you know, New York had all these guys and the most popular guys were the guys that never went to college. They, they played on the playgrounds of New York. We have, we have idols today, a hundred years later that they can tell you who the best street ball player was in New York in 1951. I mean, wow. but that's what happens. Go find a game. And then you know what? People will find you. I love that. Thank you, Sonny. Over to you, Jim. Thank you, Britt. And that takes us to the last question of the night, Sonny. We're, we're right on schedule here. Thank you. And this question is from, I want to make sure I get this uh, student. Uh, it's from Colleen Worthington. And she asks, what advice can you share with aspiring young leaders within today's sports management and marketing landscape? 
Well, start, well, start right now, okay? Whoever asked this question, you gotta meet people again. I would go, I, I, it depends what you wanna you, be involved, be an agent for the thing, you know, for the agent, be a trainer. There are so many different jobs now. Agents, when I were verboten a long time ago, there are very few of them had agents. Going back to Michael, I mean, Donald Dell was the premier owner of the, the, the company that David Falk represented at that time. And he worked for Donald Dell when they signed Michael. Then when he signed Michael, he started David Falk Enterprises. So what you what you have to do, you just go find, find this position you're looking for and find those opportunities. But there are many doors open that only look like they're closed because you're too damn lazy to go open them. Go open them. Go, go find out. Go spend time with people of interest. Go involve yourself with situations that, man, look at pickleball. I mean, pickleball. I laugh at pickleball. Look at this. I mean, there's an audience for pickleball. There's a certain age group that loves it. To me, to, you know, this purest guy I remember, you know, telling my wife and my brother all that stuff, pickleball, pickleball. Thousands, millions of people, they made a business out of pickleball, which is great. Maybe that's, that's the answer I'm trying to tell this person here. There is something that no one thought of that you might think is stupid. It's that idea in your mind. Put it to use, Jim. Tell them, just put it, to go tell you. What can they do? Say no. Go get another one. That's all. Uh, that, that's, that's a great message. Yeah, I, I saw... I saw a match between uh, McEnroe and Chang played Agassi and Roddick. Wow. And at the end of the match, Agassi said, I used to make fun of pickleball and now I'm addicted to it. And so wow. it's interesting. It's, it's really something. It's really it's something. so it fun. Is. I'm a big fan. Well, uh, Jim, can we do our last trivia question real quick? Oh, sure. Sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So again, folks, this is the, uh, uh, it put your answers uh, down in the chat. I'm sorry. I thought we had uh, had uh, asked all three, but we obviously didn't. So, um, so the, this last question: What is the name of? The, see if anybody who was paying attention tonight. Uh, what is the name of the high school all star basketball event Sonny co-founded in Pittsburgh in 1965? McDonald's All American Game, the Show All Star Game, the Dapper Dan Round Ball Classic, or the All American Showcase? All right, I'm back with our winner. Bobby All right. Perez, Bobby Perez, congratulations. Um, make sure you take a look for your direct <clears throat> messages. You will see a link there. Fill out that link so that you can make sure to get your swag. All right, back to you, Jim. Thank you, Britt. Sonny, it has been a huge pleasure for all of us. We're Thank you for making time uh, out of your busy schedule for us tonight. We really, and we'd love to have you back uh, in, in the future. I'm sure we got some more questions probably dozens of questions that didn't get asked. So maybe we can, maybe we can do a follow-up one uh, uh, at some point. So. All you have to do is call Pam and Pam will figure it out. Yeah. I, I think I've got, I think I've got the uh, cell phones on speed dial at this point, but, okay. uh, but, uh, but, but it, this has been very good to me. And I hope all the, the people watching it, the young people watching it, uh, got something from it. Um, I, I think, you know, leaving, you know, for right now on this particular show with this group of people, just, you're going to school, someone's paying your way, you, whatever it is, you got a whole, God willingly, a whole lifetime ahead of you, go forward, just keep going forward, and you know what, however it turns out, if you're happy with your life, it's successful, you don't have to be Kobe, or Michael, or LeBron, or all the entertainers of the world, be who you are, let your, let your, mind guide you let your conscience be your your best thing if you believe in it go for it and 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 have a happy life basically happiness is not you know interpreted in a way that it's it's financial it's the clothes it's the car happiness is what's inside of you when you go to bed at night the family you're around however many or none whoever you're with at this particular time in your life and going down and it's all over we're only here for a cup of coffee yeah it's all over and that's the that's the only way i could tell your group right now you're in a good situation you got a good school someone busted her butt to help you get in here and you got 
then it's payback, pay forward, pay forward. And you do that, not so much by paying a financial thing, by giving your all to what you're doing to open a door for somebody else. If we all do that, we're living in a crazy world now for all the advance mm -hmm. we've had. I've never seen in my 83 years a harder place to be than the United States of America. Much we, different than when we, when we grew up, yes. Yeah, there's no question, yeah. no question at all. Yeah. But you know what? We've been successful. Hopefully we overcome whatever it is we have to overcome as a group. Whoa. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Well, before I turn it back over to Britt for uh, some final words, um, there's about a dozen people behind the scenes that worked for like the last three to four weeks to, to put this together. And I think most, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't think about those uh, those folks that are that are working You're to right. do that. And so we just I just wanted to take a second and thank uh, thank Andy Crow, Nerissa uh, Custer, LeVarn Gordon, uh, Leishan Cranick. Kathleen Liebenberg, uh, Keisha LaBianco, Rob Miller, John Price, Frank Totolo, and Amanda Wilson, and our legal team. Sonny, we can't forget the legal teams. No. Pam, <laughs> stay a lot of time with the legal team on the phone. Yes, we, we <laughs> special thanks to our legal team. So, but uh, Britt, uh, I'm going to send it back to you just for a few uh, messages about uh, social media, and then we'll wrap everything up. Excellent. Sunny, thank you so much for being here. And for everybody out there, don't forget to follow AMU and APU Sports Management on Instagram. You can find us at AMU APU Sports or on LinkedIn. Um, and for more information about our university or program offerings, be sure to visit APUS.edu. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with the Sport Management Department, my email is right there. It's bjacobs at APUS.edu. We would love to hear from you all. Um, if you have ideas about future webinars, if you have further questions for Sunny, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to chat with you. Now, before we go, Jim, do you want to share who our next guest in this series is going to be? Yes, we are excited to uh, announce that Lee Steinberg, uh, sports wow. agent Lee Steinberg, is going to be our next guest. So um, we are really excited that uh, we could that we could kind of lasso uh, Lee and uh, for to make some time for it. So um, so we've, we've got an incredible um, and we've got others in the wings that we're working on. We've got an incredible uh, group of folks that we're going to be bringing in uh, to share their wisdom with with all of our students. So, yeah. So make sure you follow us on social media. That's where you're going to find all the information about that next uh, series stop, if you will. And again, thank you so much to Sunny. Absolutely. And, and on behalf of, uh, of all of us, of, of Britt and, uh, and Brian and our faculty and staff, uh, we, we can't thank you enough for joining us tonight and, uh, and, and have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sonny.